All right, Afro Man, What's welcome going to on? Vlad TV. All right, all right. All right, all right. I've been seeing a lot of good interviews on it, you know what I'm saying? I kind of like, how come they ain't interviewed me yet? <laughs> no, right. here, here, here we, we go. Right. I mean, we just saw each other at the Snoop Dogg Roast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yep. funny, real funny. Yeah. I was in the back ducking. Then uh, before that, I think we saw each other at the Players Ball, I think like uh, earlier in the year. Okay, yeah, that was uh, not this year, but last year probably. Last yeah. year, yep. Yes, time's going fast. That's what it is, man. Congrats on all your success. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's start in the beginning. So you grew up in L.A. Um, you're known for Palmdale, but you actually grew up in South Central? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, it was actually like uh, 69th Street and Harvard, which is a block from Western, uh, which is a few blocks away from Normandy. So it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, South Central, <laughs> you know, that's... That's where I came up, 69th and Harvard, 69th and Western. Now, I remember, this was during the Napster days. I started downloading your stuff. You know, first I got, because I got high, but then I started getting all the other songs, and it was like, yo, this dude is dope. And this was like, probably like 98 or something? Uh, not, not that early. Um, 99, 2000? Uh, yeah, 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 it's going to be 2000. Um, yeah, definitely 2000, because like a little after, it's going to be 2001. It's going to be okay. like, it's going to be like January, February 2001. I got a deal in 2000 and like around April-ish, you know what I'm saying? I kind of got it like around March, April-ish, I got my deal in 2001. Okay. But, no, but I remember actually hearing your stuff before the deal, before that, yeah, anyone heard about it. That's what happened, it. you know, like at first I was selling them on the street, like, you know, I was just an old school you know, hustling Neanderthal. Like, I didn't, I didn't know about computer. I didn't have a computer. I didn't know about the internet or none of that. So I was selling them on the street, you know what I'm saying? So these girls from Hattiesburg took me to New Orleans, and it was the first rave I ever seen. You know, I never seen one, you know what I'm saying? You know, once I got there, you know what I'm saying, um, I was trying to sell the CDs, and... Nobody would buy them, and I kind of got frustrated. I didn't want to tote the boxes around. I, I had been I've been hustling like a long time, and it was getting to that point to where it was time for them to pay off, or I needed to look face another reality. I need to do it for fun at parties here and there, and I need to go get a job or something like that. So I just started giving them away. So all those kids, they took the CDs home and they uploaded it on a computer. You know what I'm saying? And they put it on Napster. I didn't know nothing about it. I gave away like 500 CDs that night. I didn't even care. I just kind of gave up. And it was because I got high CD and I just handed it out. But like the kids, they could pop pills and, and, and drink bottled water in there, but they couldn't smoke in the place. So they was going out to their cars to smoke like joints or whatever. So they would take the CD down there, pop it in. And they was flipping out over the song. And they would come back in, like, buying me all kind of beers. And, and I was, you know, I was happy they was liking it. And, and people were starting to speak to me or say what up or whatever. But, uh, you know, I was still broke. But I was still happy to get the recognition. So I left that night, went back to Hattiesburg. And, uh, like, within, like, 48 hours, like, the guy I did consignment with at the record store, he was... Um, telling me that Universal Records had been called and they wanted me to come to New York. They was putting up everything, this, that, and the other. But what I didn't realize what happened was all those little kids went home and put those CDs, they put like 500 of those CDs up on Napster and it went around the world like in 48 hours to the point where Howard Stern was getting it. Uh, everybody was getting it and then they was talking about it and Universal, you know, gave me a record from Napster. So it's like... Napster was like good promotion for me, like, uh, you know, like I didn't have enough money to advertise my stuff on a radio spot ad or, or to say the Super Bowl is being sponsored by Afro Man, but Napster was like this, like this free promotion that, that really opened the door, you know? Right, cause, yeah, because that's how I found uh, the song and then the rest of the album. Like hey, on hey, Napster, hey. I just kept seeing it over and over again, so I started downloading it, and I'm like, oh, this is dope. Knock on wood, but I think I'm the first, like, internet rapper to, like, got to make it, like, like to just go from the internet and then make it. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, because were you before Soldier Boy? Yes. 
Okay, so yeah. Soldier Boy was one of the first, so you were before him, so you actually were the first. Yeah, you're like, like that's it, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, everybody else knew Dr. Dre or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, this just went around, you know, got viral. I, I went viral. I was viral yeah. before there was a viral, you know what I'm saying? Viral <laughs> before viral. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Okay, so you, you put this song together, and you talked about how you, you spent like two minutes putting it together. Yeah, um, like um, I, I was telling everybody, I had like this, I had this, uh, this you know, you smoke bud and you turn to this philosopher, and this, this so I'm, I'm I'm hanging out with all these dudes going to college and stuff, and we having these deep conversations with these blunts, and you know we're these philosophers. So I had this own experiment. You ever seen Trading Places? Yeah. You know, sometimes like those. These, these rich, smart dudes that have these experiments, he's like, he goes, I don't care about hereditary versus environment, you know? Like he's, so in my mind, my hereditary versus environment was simplicity versus complexuality, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, what I was thinking was, I thought I was working too hard. I was playing musical football and I really wanted to play musical golf, you know, and then do just as much damage. So like, you got Bohemian Rhapsody, right? Then you got Don't Worry, Be Happy. Now, sweat for sweat and music knowledge, we all think possibly Bohemian Rhapsody should, it should have more views, they should have more money, because they, they got more education, they got more, it's all kind of music theory in that, that stuff was a masterpiece. But then you got Don't Worry, Be Happy. It's simple. He's the little song guy root, you know, bam, bam. So anyway, I had all these rap songs. I wrote all of this sh stuff. And I thought I was KRS-One. I'm like a real MC. I'm talking all of this shit. But I'm not really getting paid. Then I thought, I'm going to just sing a song. And I had been really smoking a lot of bud. And um, I realized that I have all kind of plans. I say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Then I smoke a joint. Then I play some music. Next thing you know, the sun's dropping, girls is coming over, homies just, I didn't do none of that shit. I had a great damn day. And then I was not, so even though it took me like two minutes and 11 seconds to write the song, it took me about six months to realize that once I lit up that joint, like I wasn't doing as much as I would like to do. Not that the next man can't, but me personally, I'm a natural procrastinator without the bud. And then after I smoke it, I get to having a good time and I'm just happy and stuff slips my mind. You know what I'm saying? So that's just, you know, my personal uh, <laughs> results of my own uh, smoking experience. So right. I wrote because I got high. It took me like six months to realize, hey, I better watch it after I smoke that joint because I might miss something important. You know, so. So, but it took me two minutes. I was like, I was like, room. At first, before I wrote it out, I was like, room, class. And then some of the stuff, I, I could look at a buddy and I could vicariously, like I didn't go to college or nothing, but my homeboys did. And we'd be chilling and laughing too. He didn't go to, I didn't do what, I, I didn't go to the studio. He didn't go to class. You know, we didn't, we all laughed and smoked this joint. And, you know, so I wrote the song, yeah, two minutes, 11 seconds. So the song goes viral on Napster. Right. And then the Universal deal happened afterwards? Right, right. Okay, so you signed a deal to Universal. At what point does it get picked up by the Jay and Silent Bob movie? It all happened at once, man. Uh, what I think happened was, I think, I don't know, because I didn't have cable. I was in the ghetto, but I, you know what I'm saying? I, hey, I was doing my thing. I was trying to come up. But when it all hit me like a bomb. Like I, the door opened up and there was everybody. Howard Stern, everybody, you know. So like, I think Howard Stern got it off the internet and was playing it. Jay and Silent Bob had just did a movie. They thought the song would work good with their movie. Then they wanted, they, Jay and Silent Bob wanted to do a video with me. They had just finished their movie. And they like that song. They in that. They're in that original video with me. Yeah, I didn't know who they were. I was totally ignorant of who they were. I didn't know who they were. Everybody was flipping out all around me. I didn't have a clue. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, he's like this brilliant, like you know, director. But anyway, 
they wanted to be in the video, and I think once they wanted to, I think that's kind of what made Universal just more stuff like, and it was more people that I, I got to remember, like they wanted me on the talk shows like Craig Kilborn, and so all of these people wanted me that I didn't even know. It's just out there on the computer just doing this thing. And I think Universal seen that, and that's when they, they, they realized the money was already there and they sent for me. You know what I'm saying? So Right. And the song blew up. It was like number one on the charts, like all over the world. Like I, I started looking through some of these lists, and it's like, it was like in Australia and this country and that country and England and everything. Like you had a number one worldwide hit. Yeah, yeah. How did how did that feel? Um, uh, unimaginable. Like I uh, would have been. I would have been, you know, tickled to death if I could have been like what I call a regional rapper. Like, you know, usually a rapper holds down his region. He holds down his coast. You know what I'm saying? That's where everybody's going to feel him. The, 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 you know, the, the slang and the jargon really doesn't go out of three states. You know what I'm saying? So, first of all, I, wanted, I would have been happy being a good hood rapper. Just a rapper you want. If everybody always asks me to rap at their parties, I'd love that. Then you want to be a good city rapper. Like if you could throw a concert in a city, then there's a good state rapper. Then there's a regional rapper, just a West Coast rapper, or East Coast rapper, or down South rapper. If you can, I would have been tickled to death with just a region. But you know, a worldwide. I didn't imagine a worldwide. It, that scared me. Like I didn't know how to take it. I was like my like that early the early days. I'm walking around in like a state of shock. Like you know, you know. So I'm I'm having fun now, but. You know, I was in, you know, <laughs> it was too right. big. It, you know, I'm looking down the list. You were number one in Australia, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, Ireland, New Zealand, Norway, and the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. I, 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 that, you know, that's beyond my uh, understanding, too. You know, I mean, I, God, that's cool. That's like the Macarena, you know, wild yeah. thing, uh, baby got back. I tell everybody, yep. because I got high, his baby got, got, I said, because I got high, his baby got back's little brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like You actually got nominated for a Grammy. Uh, man, it's, it's, you know, like I said, once it went past three states, it's all downhill, like, gravy from there. Like, everything else was just unbelievable. Sometimes I think I'm going to just wake up, you know, from, like, a pothead dream. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. When I put up, you know, when I went to Google and put weed songs, you came up number one. But there's also Cypress Hill, like hits from the bong. What, what, uh, did, what did Dr. Green, Dr. Green Thumbs, another good one. Did, 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 uh, did uh, Because I Got High come up above those? Or? Yep. Yeah, you were number one on the list. All right, man. You know, it's so, you know, I hate to, I don't like, uh, you know, being arrogant and cocky no more. But, you know, of course, everybody thinks their music is, it's your music. You know, you love your music, you know what I'm saying? So that's my song, so I, I love my song. There's so many creative people out there, you know, I don't, I don't know where to put it, you know. But, uh, like I said, it, you know, it, it's good stuff. You know, I think I'm the first one to really talk about the, the effect of it. Everybody can talk about it, like, you know, riding down the street, smoking in those, sipping up. Okay, right. that's cool, but exactly. like... You know, we know the effect of alcohol. You know, oh, I drunk it. Oh, I got too drunk. I couldn't stand up. Or this, that, and the other. But no, I don't think nobody really had talked about like, uh, you know, the possible effect of smoking too much. But kids that don't smoke weed, they can just like the melody. But like, it's like an inside joke. Everybody that really get high can really like. Uh, then they'll say, "Oh, that's Johnny," or "That's a, okay." You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's kind of like I, I connected with everybody that know about that effect, possibly, you know what I'm saying. So, have you always smoked weed or was there a time where you actually stopped? Uh, uh, yes, I didn't always smoke weed. I used to be a Nutri-Grain man. I used to play sports. I used to, you know, any kind of smoking. I thought, I remember the, um, the first, I had moved from South Central LA up to Palmdale and I met the first hippie dude I ever met in my life. Like. I lived in these apartments right next to Palmdale High School, and I would hop the fence to go to school. They told us not to do it, but of course I'd do it. It was just shorter. And there was a Lucky's on the corner, and then I, my apartment building was behind the Lucky's. 
So as I was hopping the fence, the, the stoner dude was between the wall to the school and Lucky's, and he was smoking a joint. And I, I thought the tie-dye shirts was whack. I just, you know, I just, I didn't get them, you know. I didn't know. So I was playing football. I thought I was all hard and tough and everything. So I said, man, don't smoke that. I said, I said, man, don't smoke that shit. it make you stupid. And he was like, are you speaking from experience? You know, I just thought that was funny as hell, you know. And after that, that was like my first, like, hippie friend. But, like, I didn't smoke weed until, like, um, probably after I dropped out of Pondale High School. And, like, uh, I was... I didn't have enough money for a beer one time. And this dude was like, you know, hit this, you know, and I was ready to ease my mind any kind of way. So I started smoking weed, like, like around 18. I was a late bloomer, like 18, 19. But then I didn't smoke every day. I didn't really start smoking, smoking until I went to Mississippi. Like, I started smoking like Biggie Smalls, back to back L's, you know, like when I was probably like 24, 23, 24, 25. You know, I was a late weed smoker. I kind of, you know, after you know, after I got out of high school and everything, I was out there in the real world trying to make things happen to keep from going crazy and calming down. It was, it was a, the beer and the bud really helped me out.